Welcome back. My name is Matt. This is Hidden Light. And if you didn't know, we specialize in platinum palladium printmaking. And what we're going to do today is give you a little primer slash shopping list slash introduction to sort of baby's first platinum palladium printmaking setup. So I want to tell you a little bit about what you're going to need in terms of equipment, what you're going to need in terms of software and skill sets in order to start making your own platinum palladium prints. The same skill sets apply to pretty much all alternative process prints. So cyanotype, Van Dyke, salt print, etc. This is the primer for those of you who want to do it on a super budget or who want to get your feet wet with some of the experience before you take a workshop, which I always recommend it. I, I'm the kind of guy who likes to have my hand held, but I find that if I struggle with the thing first on my own, I come to a workshop or a learning experience or a mentorship or whatever it is with better questions and better questions help me learn better. So, Let's talk first about the gear, because the most fun, most interesting part of any new hobby is buying stuff, right? I think we can all agree that gear acquisition syndrome is a real thing, and so this is a part of that. So step one, most expensively and most importantly, you'll need a computer. Second, most expensively and importantly, you'll need some sort of way to make a negative. Now, I'm going to assume that you, like most of my clients, are working from digital files rather than from analog negatives. If that's the case, you'll need a printer. Your printer needs to be able to print on Pictorico transparency film. Now, we did a whole video about this, the result of which surprised me, uh, in terms of how to make digital negatives. There's the very expensive way, and there's the, like, sort of don't worry about it and just send it way. So, I'm not going to spoil it for you. But go find that video. Check it out. It's worth your time because the results are interesting. But you need a computer and a way to print on this Pictorico OHP transparency material. The Pictorico, by the way, comes in a thing like this. And it's basically a transparent substrate that you would print on if you were making overhead transparencies. You remember what overheads were like from elementary school? or for some of you, college, that's what this stuff is. So it's mostly transparent. It's kind of like it got a weird blue finish to it. So you need that in order to print your negatives on it. Your negatives will be full size. That is to say, this is a contact print process. If you want to make an eight by 10 print, you make an eight by 10 negative. If you want to make a 40 by 60 inch print, you make a 40 by 60 inch negative. There are a couple of people and they know who they are who have figured out enlarging for UV processes. They are few and far between. As far as I can tell, it's very difficult. I would love to play that game, but for right now, just use the transparency. It's great. You can buy that from places like B&H, Adorama, or of course, Bostick and Sullivan and the other places. Uh, get whatever size works for you. I tend to proof on the little, oh no, on the little eight and a half by 11 sheets. And then when I'm ready to go big, I print on a roll. Cause I almost always, I'm going bigger than eight and a half by 11. You will need chemistry. I buy all my chemistry from Bostick and Sullivan. This is not sponsored. We don't have a relationship. They charge me full price, which I'm happy to pay. Thank you, Bostick and Sullivan. They do excellent work. The chemistry is very good. You need stuff for your emulsion, which is the platinum, the palladium, the tween, the uh, Na2, the ferric oxalate. The, uh, they have them pre-made in 25 milliliter kits, which is what I recommend you start off with. Just buy one. It's great. I mix all of my emulsions in glass containers because this stuff's not allowed to touch metal. So I use shot glasses. You can use whatever works for you. You're going to need developer. I prefer potassium oxalate as my developer and you need clearing bath stuff. All of this is very easily recognizable and understandable on their website. Find it there. I don't sell it, they do. So that 
gives you the opportunity to put chemistry onto paper. There are several different kinds of paper that you can use for the platinum palladium process. I prefer Arche Platine. It's spelled arches, but they're French. So you say it's something close to Arche. I'm an American, I don't do French. Uh, Hanamil Platinum Rag is really good. Reeves BFK is good. Burger Cut 320 is good. Any paper that will hold up well to being submerged in lots of chemistry for long periods of time is great. I find that Arsh is the easiest. It accepts the chemistry the best. It's my preference. I use pretty much exclusively that paper. It's not cheap. I buy mine from Legion Paper, but I think that there are a couple of different places that you can find it around the world. If you're in Europe, the mill's in France, so it should be easy to get your hands on. In order to coat, you will need either a glass rod, which I hate, or a brush. You want a reasonably thin brush rather than like a full-size thickness, like paint your house brush. You don't want those. You want a much thinner, much skinnier brush. Um, and then you'll need trays that are the same size or a little bit larger than the prints you're making. All of this seems reasonably rudimentary, and yet I have people who email me and say, oh, I want to start making prints. What do I need? I'm like, freaking a bunch of stuff. So now I'll be able to say, hey, watch this video I made. This is for you. I also recommend a split back contact frame. What in the hell is a split back contact frame? Well, it's a contact frame. It's a frame with a sheet of glass in it, and then a thing that pushes your print and negative sandwich up against the glass. They call it a split back because you can open the back in two or more different sections, which allows you to, if you choose to, keep your print and negative in registration, open it up, take a peek, and be like, hmm, that needs to bake a little longer. Let's, let's add some more UV light. Or, oh no, that's totally done. Let's pull the whole thing out. And then you can pull the whole thing out. Split back contact frames are definitely recommended for those of you who are just starting so that you can get a feel for your exposure with whatever your exposure unit is. You need an exposure unit. What does it do? It provides you with UV light. These processes are sensitive to UV light rather than like regular light, like say silver gelatin. So you need a source of UV. The sun is a source of UV light. And if you're cheap, you can take your contact frame with your negative and your paper and go into the out of doors and expose it for a period of time to sunlight. And it's free. It comes from the sky, at least until the government figures out a way to charge us money for it. Uh, that works great. Your exposures may be a little plus or minus. It may be a little bit difficult. Like for us, our UV exposure index during the winter is really low. We're talking like hour long exposures. During the summer, it's extremely high and I can get an exposure in under a minute. So you'll have to figure out a way to correlate what the UV index is for you on any given day or clouds or whatever to exposure time. Or, you can spend between a little bit and a whole shitload of money on a UV exposure box that puts out light, which peaks at 350 nanometers, more or less. Talk to the manufacturers. I think it's 350 to 420, but 350 is the ones that I use. You can use like grow lights, you can use black lights, you can use LEDs, you can use fluorescence. I use 350 nanometer output fluorescent tubes because they're cheap and they're easy to get and so are the light fixtures that you snap your fluorescent tubes into. There's no wiring, there's no bullshit, you just buy the tubes and stick them in a light fixture and you have a UV light source. Ta -da! And then I sit my UV light source six inches above the contact frame and make a print. We did a video about this or at least a section of a video about this. I don't know where that is. Maybe we'll have to make a new one. We'll get there or you can just use the sun. Or if you've got all the money in the world and you really want to spend lots of it, there are companies that make dedicated vacuum frame UV exposure LED light boxes that are freaking cool. And they'll take an exposure from an hour of sunlight and condense it into five minutes of this hyper intense UV output. 
I think that's an awful lot of money to spend, and I wouldn't personally buy one, but I know people who buy them and swear by them. So, if you've got a bunch of money to spend and you want to go that route, please, by all means, um, they're totally awesome. I go kind of the middle route. I get 80% of the results for 20% of the effort and expense. It's just the way I like to roll. So 10 out of 10 recommend, do whatever you want, do whatever works for you. Skill sets. This is where it gets interesting. You can figure out a way to calibrate your digital negative process so that your exposure in a controlled setting, like if you're using a light box, is always exactly the same. It's always exactly three minutes under warmed up UV bulbs, or it's always exactly 300 units under one of the very big expensive ones. Uh, I like being calibrated because it means that I can print a negative and make it print, and I know it's going to be really damn close to what I expect it to look like. Or you cannot. And there are different ways where you can futz around with different kinds of curves, and you can futz around with just maybe just send it and don't worry about whether or not you're calibrated. And it means you're gonna spend more time on making the prints, more time on the chemistry, more money on the chemistry to like, might take you a couple of tries to get a print that you like. That works too. It depends on where you wanna spend your time and energy. I have chosen to learn how to calibrate digital negatives. There are two systems out there that I recommend. One is very expensive, it's called piezography. The other is less expenses, expensive, uses standard Epson color ink sets on standard Epson printers using some fancy software called Quad Tone Rip. It's developed by this guy named Richard Boutwell and he's amazing. He's got this great system that lets you make a print, linearize it, and you'll have a curve that is output whatever in like an hour. It's awesome. I just discovered him and the way that he does things. 10 out of 10. Richard, let's be friends. I follow you on Instagram. He does great work. His software is like 100 bucks or less, and it lets you linearize quad tone rip curves. The quad tone rip software exists, and it's 100 bucks or less. I think he's got a, like a uh, kind of like a freemium shareware where it's like pay what you want for quad tone rip. I just give him 50 bucks every time I have to download it because it's worth it. Uh, and in order to use these softwares, you must have an Epson printer. You can't use a Canon, you can't use a HP, you can't use any of the other weird printers. It must be Epson. Don't ask me why, it's a whole thing. But Epson printers are pretty cheap. Or they can be pretty cheap. So that's, that's a rabbit hole. Some people choose to just invert the picture and press go and it works okay. And if okay is good enough for you to like enjoy making prints and you don't have to spend a lot of time and money and suffering, doing the calibration process, etc., do that. Nobody's ever going to know that you spent six weeks calibrating your system or that you just took a stab at two different prints and one of them turned out good. No one's ever going to know. So do that. Um, coating the paper is a skill set. Whether you're using a glass rod or a brush, you're going to have to try this a few times. The more you do it, the better you get. Also, pro tip, get a humidifier. Or, if you live in a crazy humid environment, a dehumidifier. You want your room and your paper around 50% relative humidity pretty much all the time that you're printing. We're in Arizona. I use a humidifier to bring the room up to, up to humidity. It works great. Then you just make prints. The trick is every time you make a print, it costs you money and time. So like you have to be willing to just sink in the money and time. If this is gonna be a hobby that you wanna take on, great. You should do it. Spend all the money on the upfront gear because that's the fun part, the shopping part. Woohoo! charge me. And then spend the time to actually get to know the process, do the thing, develop the questions so that when you come to a workshop, or you email me, or you slide into the old DMs and say, man, I've, I've been printing for six weeks and, and this is all I can get. What's going on? I'll say, join me for a workshop. I offer one-on-one -on -one workshops, whatever you want. We'll schedule it, you'll come out, we'll make prints together, and I'll be able to answer all of your questions. If you hate the idea of struggling with the thing first, and you'd rather do a workshop first and then struggle with it once you've got an idea of what you're doing and how I do it, great. 
email me, schedule a workshop, we'll do it. What did I miss? I'm sure I forgot something. There's a lot that goes into starting any new printmaking process. This is just like the stuff that I know you're gonna need, that you're gonna want, and that there's a bunch of different ways to do this. Every platinum palladium printmaker that I know does it slightly differently, using slightly different materials, slightly different process. So like learn from the best, learn from whoever it is you have access to and you wanna work with or whose work you respect, or just send it and do your own thing. Questions, comments, concerns, drop those in the comments down below. And when you're ready to schedule a workshop to come hang out with me in print, drop me an email and let's do it. See you in the next one.